Barrett's esophagus is a term used to describe the metaplasia of the distal squamous mucosa of the esophagus into specialized intestinalized columnar epithelium with goblet cells. It is commonly associated with chronic gastroesophageal reflux disease. The normal stratified squamous epithelium of the esophagus is pretty good at handling the friction of the food bolus, but it can be injured by acid environment. The chronic injury then leads to intestinal metaplasia. The metaplastic epithelium consists of multiple glands lined by columnar epithelium with goblet cells. Goblet cells are these larger cells with a distended cytoplasm with mucin content. Here we have one goblet cell, another one is here. The chronic injury can lead to uh, low-grade and high-grade dysplasia, which can, uh, over the time, progress to adenocarcinoma. So we need to be careful and we need to always exclude uh, the dysplastic changes in case of Barrett's esophagus. So in normal non-dysplastic glands, the nuclei should be basally located. We shouldn't see any hyperchroma, uh, hyperchromasia of the nuclei, even though reactive changes can be present. Prominent nucleoli can be found in case of reactive changes. Also, some rare mitotic figures can be present. However, nuclear hyperchromasia and distortion of the architecture shouldn't be seen. Around the glands, we can see lamina propria with some lymphocytic and neutrophilic infiltration. So here we have the lymphocytes with round nuclei, and here we have the neutrophils with uh, multilobated nuclei. The Barrett's esophagus is not purely histological diagnosis. We need to correlate the presence of intestinal metaplasia with uh, endoscopic findings, mostly because we need to exclude the presence of intestinal metaplasia in the stomach, or so-called gastric intestinal metaplasia, which could be associated with H. pylori infection. So once again, columnar epithelium with multiple goblet cells here and uh, some inflammatory infiltration of the lamina propria. Thanks for watching.